The general way I understand of this question is when you come across an ayah being quoted, okay? I'm sorry? Why isn't he in general? Because the United States is not going to give it to the international quota. But if he gets outside the United States and spends one night in one country, he'll be arrested. Not, not my issue, whether he gets arrested or not. I'm not going to worry about it. But I'm just telling you, there are Geneva Conventions, and the countries of the world come together, and they agree to the engagement of war, and sounds like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us some instructions. That is the Geneva Convention, some of them, those, those rules of the Geneva Convention is based upon this. So, it's not unusual that the Quran says, but I'm trying to point out, it's not unusual. That's basically human pieces. Sorry? <coughs> and that's what? Firaun. The Firaun of today. Firaun existed in Musa's time. We have Firaun today. The Firaun has to exist. Easy these questions, inshallah. You understand them very well? Okay. There's more questions. Tells us to arm Muslim. 
The ones that fight us, we should fight it back. Right? So it doesn't make sense. So I understand this hand as what? Submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Did I address that question? Yeah. Ten minutes. Okay, ten minutes is done. What is sharia? Very simple. The word sharia is a term being applied to study of the religion of Islam and its laws and legislation. That's what sharia is. Very similar to other religions in the world. Shall thou do not. Shall thou do this, shall thou do not do this, whatever it is. You may do this, you may not do that. Yeah? Shall, well, thou shall do this, thou shall do not. Right? That's very simple. That's what sharia is all about. And you can actually tie it with the hijab question, if it's from the same person, and to the salat question. We Muslims, through our study of the Islamic law, we have men, children, women. That's how we pray. Through our study of the science of, shari- of, of Islamic laws, right? Define sharia as the study of the scientific science behind the legislation of Islam. Through that study, we understand women must cover the way they cover. Men must cover the way they cover. Does that make sense? Yes. Sharia is not to threaten anybody's life. Sharia is applied in every country in the world. Sharia, believe it or not, is applied in every country in the world. They're going to be shocked and act like they don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Tell them. So, why do we have the jail system? Why do we, have, why do we punish criminals? There are criminals. Well, Islam says that. Criminals shall be punished. Right? What else? You don't know any, any, any laws that we have. Right? That's what Sharia is all about laws, legislations. What should you do and what you should not do. That's what Sharia is all about. Why did Prophet Muhammad said that many Aisha? Well, I was going to critique it because he asked at the age of nine. But, mashallah, the question came to me a while. It's the age of seven. Yes, he married at the age of seven. Why did he marry her? Because it was permissible to do so. And then they got going to this. Well, she's still young, she doesn't understand. Oh, hmm. According to our society nowadays, she's too young, she doesn't understand at the age of seven or nine or ten or eleven or twelve or fifteen to marry. But she's knowledgeable enough to have sexual relationship. Hmm. Make sense? Why did he marry her? It's actually a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him see, him see Aisha in a dream. Had Allah not revealed that to him, he wouldn't have married Aisha. One of the biggest lessons to marry Aisha is to show the permissibility of doing so. And if the Prophet said it was all about little girls, she wouldn't have been the first one, the, last, the only one. And did you get the people? Did you know the Prophet ﷺ had 11 wives? And they varied in age. Some of them were 7, some of them were in the late 20s, early 30s, and some of them in the early 40s, and some of them in the what? Early 50s and 60s. MashaAllah, wide range. Right? And Aisha was the youngest one he married. Who was the second youngest one? How old, how old was she? She was about 26. Yep. He went from 7 to 26. And if his marriage to Aisha, because today we look at it as weird by our standards today, if that was something weird in those days, don't you think the people of Quraysh would have made fun of the Prophet and called them all the kind of names? Yet they accepted that. That was the norm. Another thing you can tell them, tell them what is the legal age in Arizona? For a, a woman to get married, or a girl to get married. I'll tell you, a girl, tell them a girl, shock. We Googled it the other day, 16 with the permission of the parents. Texas, what is the legal permission? 13 with the permission of the parents. Utah, 11 with the permission of the parents. Sounds like, but in the 21st century, this is being practiced. Google. We Googled it the other day. <laughs> These are the state laws. Make sense? So we have laws, regulations. So back then it was okay to do this. And this has been unusual. 
Abu Jahal was the one that wanted to escape, right? Because the Prophet said that he did Aisha in Mecca, not in Medina. He did constantly the marriage still in Medina. He married her in Mecca, he was still in Mecca when he married her. And that tells you a reason why he waited two years. How many of you know what it is? Ah, now he's the different age. As a matter of fact, the Prophet said the stage of how a young girl should be married, right? Do not constantly marry until so she becomes what? Adult. And then there's someone who's adulthood. When you reach the puberty age, a person is an adult. Today in our society, adult is what? 18. In that Islam, adult is what? Maximum 15. If you're today 15 or older, it's what? Too late? Okay, you're not a little child anymore. Explain all these concepts to me. Yes, this is what it is. Make sense? In your religion, it says that you will have 72 virgins in paradise. Is this true? Can somebody tell me where the number 72 comes from? Can you quote an ayah or hadith that says number 72? I don't have that knowledge. You can't? You can't find that? But what you can ask them is where did you get that from? I got to tell from the media. Oh, the same media said what? There's a lot of Muslims in medieval things. So you didn't get it from a scholar of Islam. You didn't get it from a knowledge of a Muslim. I think I said, well, that's not coming to you. I know the truth. Oh, now you want to know the truth? Sit down. Let me tell you about the Ayah and Allah. Because you ain't going to get no versions unless you believe in the Ayah and Allah. You ain't going to get those. Right? So really, these questions are, you know why, they're being asked. You know why. They shouldn't try to make something look bad. And by the way, this number 72, what if I had to tell you 99? What if I had to tell you 100? What if I had to tell you 1,000? Which number is correct? Look at the Quran and the Sunnah. Study it, learn it, and understand it. This question is easy to answer. Why did you ask that person, why did you come up with 72? So I'm almost in the 72. But I have not come across an ayah in the Quran that says 72. But I came across an ayah says there will be what? Very beautiful women. In paradise. No doubt about it. That says in the Quran. The number is not there. And the sister is saying, what about me? What about the beautiful men? Oh yeah, you have beautiful men too. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Just like you can have four in it. You sisters will have good men, good men, good men, right? Young men, young boys, good looking. Don't worry about it. It's for both. Make sense? So this is the last question I think I had. Yeah, this is the last question I had. Any other questions you want to entertain? Any other questions you have in mind? Yes. The ones that don't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or the one that commits shirk or the associate partners of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, ma'am. Is it possible to believe that there are three religions at the same time? Is it possible to believe in what? To, to be three religions at the same time. To believe in three religions? Yeah, to be Jewish, Christian. No. Because they're contradictory to one another. So if, if, if Jews say Azra is the son of God, and the Christian says Jesus is the Son of God. Which one is it? Is it Azra or, or both? And who can to say it's both? The Jews don't believe in the day of judgment. The Christians do. They're in trouble. Jews don't believe in hellfire and paradise. The Christians do. So you're going to clash. You're going to clash. Any other questions? Yes. <laughs> 